Those of you guys who have been following this channel for a little bit longer will probably know that I don't really review newer films that often. That is, I don't tend to review movies that have just come out, because everybody does, and as such, it's oversaturated. If I do release a review for a movie that's come out very recently in relation to the upload of the video, it's usually because I believe it's a very good movie, such as with Rogue One, Doctor Strange, etc. Now this particular film I would say is definitely a movie worth checking out, and to be honest, you don't have to be a fan of Shyamalan to enjoy this movie. A lot of people are mixed on him as a director, some people even go so far as to say he's a bad director, Personally, I think that's a stupid statement to make, because being a bad director would mean that you have no good movies. And that's quite simply not the case. A good director can still make bad films. There's a big difference. Now, I'm a fan of Shyamalan's films. Some of his films are among my favourites. My personal favourite of his being Signs. I love the atmosphere of that film, I love the slow burn creep factor that it has, I love the music, I love everything about it. As I said, it's one of my favourite movies, probably in my top five. Now this movie I went into with pretty high expectations, because I already like his movies, even the ones which aren't that well received, I still found to be okay, if not just entertaining rather than good in a traditional sense. The only film of his that I've seen which I didn't like, and I haven't seen all of his films, was Airbender. I couldn't care less about that movie, but I also couldn't care less about the source material. So what about Split? Well, this is the kind of film that you need to see very quickly after its release to get the best out of it. And I know this isn't anything that people haven't said before, but that's because it's true. It's the kind of movie that if you leave it too long, due to the nature of the internet, you will have it spoiled. And although the spoiler, or the predominant spoiler, doesn't ruin the whole movie, it does take away from a lot of fun. That you could have in the film. Now, if you're new to the channel, don't worry, I don't spoil any movies that I talk about, but how does this movie fare against his other films, and if you're not a fan, say, or maybe you're a skeptic of his movies, how does it compare then? Is it something you should still check out, or will there be some M. Night-isms that you may not enjoy? Well, first of all, I have to say that this is a film which grew on me after a second viewing. The first time I watched it, I loved it. The second time, I loved it even more. It wasn't a case of being persuaded, I did really like it, and then I just liked it even more the second time. And on a second viewing, as with pretty much any movie, you notice so many more things. And I don't necessarily mean just plot points or story points. The story is relatively simple, you can see it in the trailer. It's about a guy with multiple personalities, played by James McAvoy of course, who kidnaps three girls for an unknown, or relatively unknown, but probably insidious reason. And that's the plot. It doesn't need to get overly complex, and it doesn't get overly complex. There are certain points in the film, again, without spoiling anything, that some people, some other reviewers, etc., have said that they had issues with. Some of them were resolved for those people, others perhaps it wasn't resolved for. Personally, I had no issue with the film. I enjoyed the journey, and nothing ruined it for me. And I personally found that the second viewing in particular allowed me to appreciate the filmmaking of this movie a lot more. With some movies you have to watch them twice to understand them better, such as with The Machinist or Memento. With Split on the other hand, it's not as much in that regard, but more appreciation for clever little details and the overall quality of the filmmaking in general, especially with regard to the visuals and also the audio. The first time I watched the film, I didn't notice the soundtrack as much. The second time I noticed it a lot more and really liked it. Because when I watch a movie I predominantly follow the characters and the story, and I can sometimes miss smaller details like what particular soundtrack the film may have had until I actually go back and revisit it to notice a second time around. And for me with Split, that was definitely the case. Now, we've already discussed the rough plot, and you can't really go into it any deeper than that without spoiling stuff, but if that sounds like it appeals to you, 
then I would definitely recommend checking it out. And that may sound like an obvious thing to say, but this is one of those movies where if you like the premise, you will probably like the film. If the premise doesn't appeal to you, it's not the kind of movie where it's marketed as one thing, but turns out to be another. If you want what the trailers offer, it does deliver on that. What then about our individual scores? Well, first up, as always, we have the story and the plot of the movie. And for the story and plot of Split, I'm going to give the movie a 7 out of 10. And the reason why I'm giving it a 7 is because primarily of the way the story is told, rather than the story itself. In a similar way to movies like Trick or Treat, where the story itself, if you actually lay it out on paper, is relatively simple. It's not really the story itself that makes it an entertaining watch, it's the way the story pans out, the way it's told, the way it's presented, that makes it so much better than it easily could be otherwise. Likewise, I would say with Split. The story itself is a relatively simple one. It's about mental illness. But what it does with that premise is very good. You could very easily have it to be too slow or too boring a movie, or maybe even generic, as there have been hundreds of movies made about people with mental issues in everything from thrillers to dramas to horrors. But the film does manage to feel unique. I certainly haven't seen other movies that were coming to mind while I was watching this. It feels like its own thing. It doesn't feel like it's copying other source material or imitating other films. It definitely feels like its own thing, and I really enjoyed that. Next up, though, we have the characters and their motivations, the people in the film. And for this film, this probably isn't too surprising given the things that I appreciate about movies, which if you've been, again, on the channel for a little longer, you'll probably see this coming, but I'm giving it a 10 out of 10. And I will definitely say that the film is carried predominantly by James McAvoy. And although his performances definitely do steal the show, there are definitely other performances as well, in particular supporting performances, that really contribute a lot to the movie. And I really liked all of the performances, in fact. There were certain characters who, especially earlier on in the film, were perhaps a little annoying. But again, it wasn't extreme, it certainly didn't take me out of the film, and it didn't ruin it for me. And I found that, personally, all of the characters just kept getting better as the film progresses. You go into more of their backstories. You learn why they are the way they are. And I loved the journey of doing so, especially on the second time around. So overall, it's a definite 10 from me. What though about the visuals, the special effects if and when used, and also the general look and style of the film, the cinematography, the colour grading, that kind of thing. Well, I'm going to give Split an 8, and the reason why I'm giving an 8 is because I really like the camera work in the film, I love the editing, I love the overall feel that the look of the film gives you. As you'd expect, it is a claustrophobic film for the most part, and I really like films that are like that, and it has a great look. The only reason why I wouldn't rate it even higher is because in some parts of the film I personally found that the visuals were a little too simple. Not necessarily of the characters, but some of the backgrounds in certain scenes, some of the colours of certain rooms, the layouts, especially towards the end of the film, become a bit boring for me. They just look like blank, completely detailless scenarios and situations. And although that certainly didn't come anywhere near to ruining the film, it was just a little nitpick that I personally had. I still love the way the film looks overall, but also the fact that there aren't as many special effects used in the film, so you can't really give it extra points for that, means that overall an 8 I think is fairly generous for this film, given that I only give the maximum scores to films which really do have amazing practical effects in particular, CGI when used well, etc, etc. And as far as the audio, the soundtrack, the music of the film, I'm going to give it another Eight, because, as I said, I didn't really notice it that much the first time around, and for the majority of the film, I still didn't notice the soundtrack and audio that much. There were just two primary occasions, at least for me personally, where the audio and the soundtrack really stood out. 
One is the opening credits, which are fantastic, the editing, the lack of colour, the simplicity, and also the almost Hitchcockian feel of the opening credits I loved, and it really focuses your attention on the music and the soundtrack. And also, not at the very end of the film, but towards the end, there's another piece of very similar music used, which I really liked again. Apart from music and soundtrack, the film has good sound design overall, and there are certain moments where that plays into the story more, but in general it's adequate for the story that it was telling. It didn't need to be more loud or offer more pizzazz, it just did what it needed to do. So overall, I'm going to give it an 8. And finally, for the rewatchability and entertainment factor, well obviously it's going to score fairly high because I went to the cinema to see it twice. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10, and the reason why I'm not giving it a full 10 is because, for me personally, I don't feel like it's a hugely rewatchable film. I have watched it twice, and I've enjoyed it very much, but the pacing of the film, although definitely not too slow, is slow enough that it's not the kind of film which I'd put on, say, every week. There are certain other movies, maybe even some slow ones, that I could do that with. This doesn't feel, at least at the moment for me, like one of those films. It's a little bit of a slower burn that requires more attention. It's a film that you have to watch in silence, so it's definitely not a group watching film because you'll just miss too many things in conversation. And overall, it's definitely rewatchable and very enjoyable. The entertainment factor is fantastic, which is why I'm giving it a 9, but there's just a slight lack in rewatchability, but that's only for three, four, five rewatchings. It's certainly fantastic for two or three, probably more for other people as well. And overall, that means that as a tabulation of our five score categories put together, I am giving Split a very impressive score of 4.2 out of five, which is one of, not the highest, but one of the higher scores on my channel. I really did enjoy this movie, and to be honest, my second viewing actually raised the scores of this film. I was initially going to rate it a little lower, such as on soundtrack, because it didn't stand out as much, but on a second viewing, it definitely improved it for me even more. So, if you haven't watched this film yet, I would definitely recommend checking out as soon as possible if it does appeal to you in particular, because, as I mentioned early on in the video, it's just one of those films that if you wait for too long, it will get spoiled, because people cannot help spoiling things. That's just the way YouTube and the internet in general works, unfortunately. So overall, I definitely recommend checking out the film, and if you're a Shyamalan fan anyway, I think you'll love it, as I did. But overall, that's it for this particular pick. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.